It's once again time to talk about the classic Mac Pros and the Mac Pro 2013s and running the latest Mac OS, that being Mac OS 13 Ventura. It's been a while since I made a video posting anything Mac Pro related, and that is because there hasn't been much news to report, at least up until the past few days. And that's entirely about running Mac OS 13 Ventura on unsupported Macs. This is going to get a little bit geeky, so bear with me and I'll repeat some of the stuff I've said in previous videos, but I want to make sure everyone's on the same page. Running modern versions of Mac OS has been made entirely possible by OpenCore and OpenCore Legacy Patcher. And if you're unfamiliar with OpenCore, it's a bootloader that's useful to both native Macs and Hackintoshes as it allows for injecting changes into Mac OS without modifying the physical OS. Links are to, in the description of this video so you can read more on that topic. In my previous video, I spent a lot of time talking about CPU instruction sets. The latest version of Mac OS 13 requires AVX and AVX2 CPU instructions for Intel Macs, and rather than rehash it, here's what I said in my previous video on that topic. Infamously, the classic Mac Pros do not support AVX. The 2013 Mac Pro supports AVX, but not the AVX2 instruction set. Not that this is important to understand, but AVX, or Advanced Vector Extensions, are a set of instructions for doing single instruction multi-data, or SIMD, operations on x86 CPUs. It's just designed to speed up certain types of floating point compute operations. I really recommend watching my previous video in its entirety since I cover a lot of the big changes and hurdles for running macOS 13 on unsupported Macs, like the DYLD cache issue. There are massive changes in Ventura related to both dropping this GPU and CPU support. The OpenCore Legacy team has been able to get legacy GPUs working, specifically the NVIDIA Kepler GPUs and the AMD GCN chipsets that are found in the 2013 Mac Pros and some of the Intel iGPUs. It's not perfect and there's a lot of glitches, so I feel like I should read verbatim the kind of issues people are facing. Most of these issues are remedied on the classic Mac Pros by upgrading the GPUs to a modern AMD GPU. So when you see an issue like photo editor is crashing on the affected models of Intel integrated GPUs, which don't exist on the Mac Pro 2013 or classic Mac Pros, and only affects the NVIDIA Kepler chipset, you can either live with the problem of the Kepler chipset or upgrade to, say, a RX 5800, which is still supported under modern Mac OS. The 2013 Mac Pro doesn't really have a fix for, say, the screensaver crashing. This, you can't upgrade the GPU. Do check out this document, as this is bound to change on this list, because even between the time of recording this video and then coming back to edit it, the reported issues and fixes had changed. Now it's time to talk about CPU news, as this is where things get more interesting. John DeGroof, who is a member of the OpenCore group on Facebook, is reporting that the famed Apple legacy support hacker, Syncretic, he's done quite a bit of work to get classic Mac Pros working, and also the GPUs like the AMD Radeon 6800 and 6800 XT and 6900 XT supported on the classic Mac Pros. The same guy is writing a AVX an AVX2 emulation set for non-AVX supported Macs, and it's currently in a pre-alpha state. Quick aside, please don't reach out and bug the people I just mentioned, as they will let us know when things are ready to be tested. As of recording this video, Ventura is now beta and installation is not easy. There's the issue, like I previously mentioned, the DYLD cache that requires an Apple Silicon Mac, and also you need to install the kernel debug kit from Apple's developer website as on-disk text binaries were removed from Ventura. There's plenty of work to be done and things like USB 1.1 support and ethernet are still not in OpenCore legacy patcher and may or may not ever be supported. So 
there's quite a bit of things that need to happen to make this more of a seamless install process and ready for prime time. Before I close out this video, I figured it was important to point out that you can get the latest and greatest news about OpenCore Legacy Patcher and OpenCore as it pertains to macOS 13 Ventura by going to the official GitHub site. And I'll have the link in the description of this video as that's where I got a lot of my information to make this content. So please check that out. Thanks for watching and cheers.